One of the wonderful things about being a part of an academic community like Williams is that sometimes you are invited to become a part of someone else's project. And so what I'm going to talk about uh, is the fact that Delila Scruggs, who's a Mellon Fellow at the Williams College Museum of Art, invited me to play with her. And what are we playing with? We are co-curating uh, an exhibition that opens in January on African Americans in the American scene from the 1930s to the 1940s. And our exhibition will focus on both the visual and the performing arts. And so little did I know that this research that I'm doing, that looking at visual art, that looking at old movies, reading books, and talking would take me right back to a painting that I very much objected to when I first met it in 2005. And that is Herman Rossi's Carnival of Life. There we go. So um, I walk past this painting every day. I look at it from the balcony um, where my office is every day. And uh, it's become a part of the environment of the 62 Center. So when I first met this painting uh, at the um, conservatory lab at um, the Clark Institute, um, I burst out laughing. Why? Because it's filled with what to me are arcane, iconic um, representations of Western theater from long ago. And I have no problem with putting the old with the new uh, in terms of it being installed in a completely modern environment. But what caught my particular attention was this little dark head in the center of the painting. And so in looking at it, I was thinking, what was Rossi thinking about? And why did he put that particular figure there? Who is this figure? And what is this figure representing, not only for Rossi, but what does it mean to me at this particular point as a performing artist who is African American? And so my quarrel with this painting began. Well, the invitation to play with Delilah Scruggs and the staff at WICMA then took me to Chapin Library, which has a collection of Herman Rossi drawings for the great 1933 film, The Emperor Jones, starring Paul Robeson. So in our quest for material, we came across Herman Rossi's storyboard for the camera, because he was the set designer for this particular film. And so out of these drawings, I've fallen in love with particular ones. This is a, repre a representation of drumming, a representation of drummers, a representation of African bodies in movement, a very exceptional representation of African bodies in movement. Herman Rossi's eye captured what's significant about the African body performing the dances that are particularly from West Africa. He captured the waist, the movement of the hips and buttocks, the position of the legs, and the angle of the feet. This is also an angle that's important in African sculpture. And so his eye for movement as a dancer, it really, it really grabbed my attention and it touched my heart in a way that I did not expect to. I was also really captured and captivated with this image of an African woman with her hands up. And she's clearly to me, perhaps in a fire lit environment where there's great shadow play. Now, one of the things that's important about this set of uh, storyboard drawings of Rossi is that when you see the photographs, and if you ever have an opportunity to see the film, The Emperor Jones, you see these drawings come to life. And of course, some of the scenes are edited out, but you are gonna come across these very vivid drawings. Now, here's where I get to crawl with Mr. Rossi again. 
Here's what Rossi says, his instructions to the camera. Fade in. On a clearing in the African jungle, a ceremony is in progress with dancing and the boom of tom-toms. The Negroes dance in a circle, each following the one in front of him. Their bodies sway in a barbaric rhythm. Dissolve on the dancing bare feet of the savages. So Rossi is using a language that is representative of his time and space as an artist and as a speaker of the English language. So my quarrel with him continues. What do I love about those drawings that I saw in the folder? is their rich representation of African bodies dancing in space and time. But again, it takes me back to that lone figure in the carnival of life. Who is that figure? Why and what are they representing? Now that took me to Sterling Brown. Sterling Brown, as some of you will know, is a Williams alum. He was an excellent poet and observer of history and culture. Sterling Brown said that art of this type, as well as language and film, is representative of what white authors, he says, call the Negro character. And he has seven character types. The contented slave, the wretched freeman, the comic Negro, the brute Negro, the tragic mulatto, the local color Negro, and the exotic primitive. So when I read Sterling Brown's essay, I decided that the representation of that lone little head in a sea of other figures and icons of Western theater was representing the exotic prim primitive, the lone African or Caribbean figure in theater, or the local color, meaning the Negroes that we know. Uh, the people who are representative of singing in church or picking cotton or um, cleaning your kitchen. Just a symbol of what that represented in American culture. So as I think about Herman Rossi and as I think about the power of his work, I come across this image. This is the great Paul Robeson. And there are several images of him from the storyboard for the Emperor Jones that capture the intensity of his physical beauty, that capture the intensity of this character that Eugene O'Neill wrote um, for another actor, but that Paul Robeson brought to the screen. And I feel something else as a person who's African American and as a person who is an appreciator of visual art and who's also a performing artist. There's a truth and beauty of this image because of how the artist conceived the work. This particular image caught my attention because of the headdress and because of the texture of the drawing and the way that it's assembled on the page. Little did I know when I did further research that this particular image turns up in a Paul Whiteman film called The Jazz King. If you know who Paul Whiteman is, he commissioned George Gershwin's Great Rhapsody in Blue. And the film that they made together was significant in this way. It represented a technical breakthrough for the American film industry using Technicolor. And it also showed us how Paul Whiteman envisioned not only his place in American jazz, but also how Gershwin was beginning to think of his own place as a composer in American music. So I'd like to share with you, before I close, this clip from Paul Whiteman's The Jazz King. No record of American music would be complete without George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. 
which was written for the Whiteman Orchestra and first played in Aeolian Hall in 1924. The most primitive and the most modern musical elements are combined in this rhapsody, for jazz was born in the African jungle to the beating of the voodoo drum. The significance of this image is that it does capture something powerful about the black body in motion. It does also echo Sterling Brown's idea of the exotic primitive. It also finds its way as an image in subsequent films and portraits of African Americans, and particularly representations of us in film. If you are familiar with the film um, Stormy Weather, there's a scene with the great Bill Robson, Bill Robinson tap dancing on the head of the drum, and there is an African American man singing about the low, slow beating of the tom toms, and there are drums layered and layered and layered and layered on the set in a way that echoes Rossi's brilliant portrayal of African dance and music in motion. So my qual with, with Rossi is that these images are beautiful and powerful. However, the language of the time refers to these beautiful image, images as savage as primitive, as um, barbaric. And so that language can continue to color their use in the future if we choose to tag these images with those words. As an artist who's falling in love with the beauty of these images, I am struggling with myself to find a place in my heart to allow them to live and to allow them to instruct me um, as, as to why this particular artist was attracted to the same rhythms and to the same depiction of the black body in motion and space and time that as a dancer I am perpetually in love with and inspired by. Thank you.